What's going on everybody? Joey here with Righteous Response and today we are doing a Smith & Wesson 686. This is going to be probably one of the most complicated builds we have ever done on the channel. I'm super excited for it. We need to extend this barrel, add a level 3 hood to the holster, put it on a mid-ride, and we're actually going to wrap it in leather, which is a first. Super cool, super excited about it. I actually bought two of these and there's a reason for that. The plan is to split one of these molds right down the middle and we're going to make a vac mold out of it. Because I really don't like pressing onto these. There goes my light. I do not like pressing onto these blue guns in a foam press because they will just bend. Matter of fact, you probably can't see it on camera, but I can literally bend this barrel right now. So forming this with foam, with all the pressure it takes to get a good uh, looking holster is not really gonna work out, especially with everything we're doing on this. So I wanna split this in half. We're gonna make a vac mold out of it. It's gonna be a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be one killer looking holster. And my buddy Derek sent me this order. Super excited to help him out. Super unique build. I'm glad you guys are gonna tag along and watch it. It's gonna be a really long process. It's probably gonna take like five minutes just to cut through the center of this thing. But with that being said, I wanna to try to get dead center between this front sight all the way down to the rear sight. Not super easy, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the less problems you're gonna have as you form this one. All right, that was a lot faster than five minutes. Probably because I just put a new blade on. It really didn't take as long as I thought it would, but you know what, that actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Little uh, favored this side a little bit on the cut, but I think it's gonna do just fine. As you can see, every little area that is scratched up is going to have a little raised area with steel stick in there. So again, we want a smooth drawing holster. So this is uber important. Now, you might be asking, Joey, why didn't you just buy this mold or get it professionally made so you don't have to go through this trouble? Well, no one makes a mold for this and the only mold available, and I, again, I don't really consider these molds, is the blue guns because I don't really consider them um, of high enough quality to actually press on them as you would a professional mold. So now we are going to get this putty started. We'll start uh, a little bit at a time because this kind of hardens up pretty quick. I think it's advertised at 15 minutes and then a couple hours for it to fully harden, something like that. Alrighty, fast forward, these are done. They're not quite set all the way. They still need to dry a little bit. But what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna put a few layers of tape right here on the back side of the sugar guard, get rid of this opening here. And then we're gonna put the glue in to level out the trigger guard here. So before I add this quick set into the trigger guard area, I'm actually gonna hot glue right around the inside of the trigger guard so this doesn't seep through as it's drying. So I've got my hot glue gun here, just gonna run it on the edges. Now this stuff usually dries pretty quick so while that's drying I will get this stirred up. This is actually advertised as a six minute, but I'm gonna call it a night after this anyways. Give it a good 20, yeah, maybe 12 hours of dry. Now 
There's a uh, different model of stuff you can use. It's like a clear. It's a little more runny, which is typically better. But this stuff will work just fine. So when you're doing this, you want to clean up everything that you don't want any of this stuff to dry on. So this is already pre-blocked. We don't want to mess with this too much. So we want to clean that up a little bit. Again, clean the outside of the trigger guard. That all looks good. And there we have it guys. We are going to let this sit overnight. I will come out in the morning and we will get right back to work. Retention plate cut here. As you can see it's a little long, but there's a reason for that. The holster needs to fit a 6 inch barrel. This is only a 4 inch mold. They only make it in a 4 inch offering in terms of the blue gun. So we need to extend this out another two inches so that needs to come all the way out about about there so my plan is to build up some sort of blocking to fill in the rest of the the two inches so his holster will actually fit correctly so let's go ahead let's see how do I want to do this <clears throat> Just go ahead and trace it. We're gonna come past the six inch, and, we'll, and we're just gonna make this a open end holster. The everything's gonna be covered. The barrel's gonna be covered, but just a little section down here is, is gonna have a little opening. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't want to make it closed. It there's, there's too much guesswork there. So I'm thinking this is going to work perfectly. Okay, as you can see, got the retention plates cut out. Not the prettiest thing out there, but in this case, they don't really have to be. Now, one other issue we might have when we go to press this is if you look here, this is skinnier than the actual mold now. Being that the bandsaw blade is, you know, a, a few thousandths thick, or whatever the measurement is, it, you're going to be a few thousandths skinnier than what this, this is, excuse me. So if we take some measurements here. So on this guy, the one we cut, the cylinder's measuring about 1528. And this one's 1542. So not a huge difference. And honestly, we could probably just slam this down form it and then there's probably gonna be enough wiggle room in the heated sight channel as we fold over this that it will it will dry to this spec which we want but just to be safe what we can do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some tape just some standard blue tape to the back side of this maybe I don't know three layers here three layers here and we'll see what that gives us okay so now we have three layers of tape on both sides of this let's measure the one that we did not cut. And that is right about 15, 44, depending on where you measure, about 15, 40. And then the one we cut, added three layers of tape. We were right at 1550. So, 1549. We'll go ahead and leave it. Because this is all going to compress down as the vacuum slams down on it. So that's about perfect. Now, we're almost done making this mold. We can almost form this guy, but I need to find a way to fill in this little channel here. So he has access to using, it, using the holster with a 6 inch barrel. Plenty of ways we can do that. Um, probably the easiest is to stack up some wood here, maybe cut out 
wood that actually matches the same dimension so it doesn't look funky. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is blending the two together. I'm not so sure. Well, I, I, I could probably use more of that steel stick and maybe blend them together. I don't know if I'm gonna get the same shape, the same lines here. But in this case, we can kind of cheat because Derek here, he uh, requested a leather wrap around the holster. So we were, we're not even gonna see any of these lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna block some wood up here. It's not gonna look pretty. I probably wouldn't do this with plain Kydex, but in this case, we can make an exception because it's getting wrapped in leather. Won't even notice. It's still gonna be highly functional, just as good. So let's go ahead and figure out what'll fit best here. The work is still not done. We gotta figure out a way to get this level three hood system onto this holster. Matter of fact, it's gonna be a level three plus because we are adding the century strap. Pretty cool little doodad here. And we also gotta put it on a mid ride. So, a lot of work to be done. So before we get too far, we need to add holes here for the vacuum so it can seal down on this and get a good form. You wanna take the smallest drill bit you got and about every inch or so, on every little high level, every crevice, we are going to put a hole. All right, guys, took a break from this next day, but we are back. Just realized my camera battery is about to die, so I'm gonna go through this pretty quick here. Just explain it to you guys. What we need to do is we need to come up with some blocking to put there. All right, as you can see, got this all taped up. My camera battery died, so I'm using my phone. I'll go ahead and explain to you what I did. I think you guys saw earlier, I built up some wood to make for backing for the mounting plate for the locking hood and the mounting plate for the drop leg. Now, when you're working with a really good vacuum system like I have, you want to fill in the sides. You don't want to leave it a hollow, kind of like that. I mean, I'll get away with that, but you don't want to leave a big giant hollow space because that Kydex will fold under this and you'll never get that out. You'll destroy the holster removing that. So we want to make sure that you fill that in. This one will be okay. I should be able to just pull it out from the top end. So that'll be all good. Uh, extended the barrel, as you can see. Okay, that is hot off the press and it came out pretty good. As you can see, we did the logo on the inside. So from here, what we're gonna do is just cut it out. Now this is a revolver, so we don't have to cut down on, on the trigger guard at all. We can, I'll probably come down to here. So it matches the other side. As you can see, I didn't bring the retention plate all the way down on both sides, but that is perfectly fine. We will go from here Follow the trigger guard up so we have good protection of the trigger. And then I'm going to cut this part out. Alrighty, all cut up on the bandsaw. Now what I like to do if I'm folding over a blue gun, is I will add just a few layers of tape here just to help it give it some uh, space between the kydex and the finish of the actual gun. That's gonna help with wear and tear. Uh, but I tell everyone, you know, kydex, leather, nylon, it doesn't matter. Eventually the wear on that gun is gonna wear down a little bit. But in doing this, it can help slow that down. But guys, you gotta see these as tools. I know sometimes they're pretty, 
but it is what it is. If you're using it and you get some wear in your gun, just means that you're actually practicing like you should. You've heard me say that on the channel before, but that is just my opinion. Let's probably do maybe two on the cylinder. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now here, I'm not sure I can get this on camera very well. I usually hang it off my table, but I'm gonna take this heat gun here, heat up the center section right here, and then fold it over the full mold right here. So again, just setting here. I'll usually grab some clamps, clamp it down where I can. Take some air, cool it off. Gonna have some retention right here for sure. Right on the front of that trigger guard. And then I'm thinking we do two, maybe three up down here. So I got that cut and drilled out. Now the next step is to buff this thing. You can see the edges are not very pretty. We don't want that. We want that to be a nice flat looking finish. So basically, we're just gonna come up and down like this till it all looks nice. Still got some more to do. Figured I'd give you guys that quick demo. So here's the finished shape of this guy. Pretty excited about this. Can't forget we're gonna add this. Then a mid-ride and then here is the leather that the holster will be wrapped in. Super stoked about this. I've done plenty of fabric wrapped holsters but I've never done leather wrapped. So this should be pretty interesting. I have some nice glue that should work with this. Should work great. But yeah, look at the inside of that. That looks awesome. It is now time to wrap this thing in this beautiful leather. But first, what we need to do is totally degrease this. I know it has some oils and whatnot on it. So simple. What I do, take some brake clean, just wipe it down. So the next step from here is to get the glue down on the leather and we want to let it sit for like five or 10 minutes. We're gonna let this tack get nice and sticky and then we're gonna start wrapping it around this thing. Now bear with me guys, it's been a while since I've done a wrap. I've never done a leather wrap. For all I know, this may not even work. Um, but it seems to be the same thickness as a Cordura. I've done plenty of those, it's been a while, but. We'll see how it goes. But uh, anyway, this is the glue I use, it's barges. I get it by the big tub here. I have never had a fabric wrap holster come undone with this glue. So this seems to be good stuff. I want this to tack up pretty quick because I'm ready to put this on there. I don't want to wait another five minutes just for this to dry even harder. So I'm going to hit this with the heat gun, dry it quicker. <clears throat> just getting this all on here now straight is going to be the hard part. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to follow all the little cracks and crevices here. 
So at least looks like the holster is formed under the leather. Now, there's this giant little lip here that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to feel with that leather. And I would think I'd rather have this look straight down here than try to focus on that so much. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, add a little bit of glue and just heat tack it real quick. It almost turns more of a gold, gold burnt color as it tacks. It's kind of hard to pick up on camera, but you can tell in person for sure. Okay, now we want a nice tight fold over. We don't want to just jump to the other side. So we're going to slowly work from the sight channel down. You also might have noticed that I pre-drilled everything before I set the leather down onto it. So that way I can feel where the hole is and we'll just poke through. That way I don't have to play another guessing game on where to set my holes and whatnot. In terms of the retention and the, the holes for the drop leg and the locking rig. So the back side is definitely not as pretty as the front side. I kind of assumed that was going to happen just because this big giant level change between the the t-mounting system and the actual mold i was kind of expecting that so i'm not too upset there but man the front side looks pretty good this is all pretty pretty flat down on the surface it's not going anywhere but again guys I, i'm i'm not a master at wrapping <laughs> wrapping anything, but uh, I'm not a wrapper, a uh, master of wrapping these these holsters at all. I've only done a few of the fabric wraps. This is my first time doing a leather wrap, but you know what? It, I'm actually pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. I think it's going to wear really nicely in terms of the the leather. It's a nice dark leather, so as it you know wears and and a uh, customer uses it, it's going to look even better in my opinion. A nice rusty kind of look. Rustic look to the leather is going to be killer on this thing. It's going to be awesome. So now let's focus on these edges here. I want to make sure that they get set down and glued down nicely. So you can see, we want to work those. So from here, we're going to let this sit for a little bit. We need to cut off all the excess, but I want to make sure this glue sets nice and hard. I don't want to undo it when it's still drying. I want this leather to stay on there forever so we never have to do this again. I gave it about another five minutes and from here we're gonna take a razor and just cut off all this excess leather, clean it up, and then from there I'm gonna take it to the buff wheel and angle off these edges on that leather to help maybe fuse it to the kydex in theory. But first let's get this leather cut off. some stout stuff. Need to be careful not to cut the actual kydex because I'm sure at the right angle I could. So that's about as close as I'm gonna get with the razor. I'm gonna take it to the buffing wheel and I'm hoping that it'll tear off the excess and make it look nice at the same time. I'm gonna go try that and I'll be right back and we'll see how it goes. But another technique I just figured out is you could take your heat gun and slowly go around all these little frilled edges and it kind of melts them down a little bit, makes it look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, next we gotta punch out our holes that we already drilled. You can kind of see them if you push on the leather. A 
Also, I kind of remember where they're at. Alrighty, so here, let's go ahead and get these retention holes drilled out. I think what I want to do though is I don't want to punch all the way through. See how it lifted up that leather off the glue? I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go from here, then here, and all this as best as I can. So what I could do is just throw the hardware into these holes, but as you can see, they don't look very good. And you might see the the strands under the hardware and it's just going to look ugly. So I have a way to fix that. I have a little soldering iron that is the perfect width to just stick in here and burn those. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get that thing fired up. It's going to make this look a lot better. So let me explain to you guys how I do my leg straps here. So I have a one inch piece of nylon webbing. It's probably, uh, I don't know, three-ish feet long. I usually cut them long and then the customer can trim them to their leg size. They are adjustable though. So I have this little one inch piece of stretchy nylon here. So that way the belt has some give. I don't wanna make the whole belt stretchy. Um, I feel like that's not really necessary. Just as long as you have a little bit of stretch, it, it seems to work just fine. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a bolt, or female, not a bolt, but a, a male-female screw through all four of these. I have this, this uh, random piece here for strength purposes. But basically, that's going to go just like that. I'm going to take my soldering iron, the one we brought out earlier. I'm gonna punch a hole right through all of these just like this. Then from there, take a male female screw, put it through all of them, at least attempt to. This I will definitely lock tight because there's no need for it to ever come off. If they don't like this belt, sorry, the uh, not a belt, but a, the leg strap, they can always swap it out. It'll come off the holster easy, but in terms of this part, it should never need to come off, so. So that gives stretch. And to clean up the edges on this, the nylon here after I cut it, I like to just simply burn it, makes it look nicer. I'm not a full blown nylon shop, so this is why I do my belts this way. It's just, it's easier for me. I would like to do nylon one day, I've thought about it, but right now I just don't have the time, but one day I will holsters and a day job keeps me plenty busy but with that being said i uh i just went part-time in my day job to take on more hol more holsters for you guys so that's pretty exciting okay so those are all burned looks good now that guy's Good stretch. Also, what I like to do is I will make a little drop hanger essentially. Because what to help visualize this, this leg strap goes under this bottom bolt on this holster and wraps around your leg. But if this is up high, 
that's also going to be up high on your leg and that might be uncomfortable. So what I've been doing is I will add this other little piece of nylon, wrap it around, punch a hole, put a rivet in it, and that puts it down inch to two inches lower. It's going to make it much more comfortable to carry this all day if you're actually using it for work. And again, that's my that's my uh, my build thoughts when I do a level three holster is this customer is probably wearing this holster all day. So I want to make sure it's going to be comfortable all day. So we're going to get that soldering iron out one more time. Fold it over. Punch a hole right through the middle up towards the top. Now this needs to be big enough for a eyelet here. And it is. Perfect. Burn these edges, make it look nice. You'll never see it under the holster, but I'll know it's there, so I want to make sure it looks nice. Got that eyelet pressed in. Looks good. Now, before you put your belt together, we need to remember to run this through, just like that. And then this, I always forget how these go. I gotta figure it out every time I do it. Oh, just like that, okay. And now that will sit right under, between the bushing and the, the drop leg. Not the holster side, because we want it to sit closer to the body. So I need to undo that one screw. All right, and that allows the belt to freely move as you walk. I haven't seen a design like this. I kind of claim it as my own. Hopefully I'm not wrong in saying that, but I'm sure someone will let me know. And now this buckle can be put behind the leg, in front of the leg, right up against the holster, however you want it. I've never seen one adjustable like this. So it's kind of my idea. But again, who knows, it might not be. Alrighty guys, that, uh, that's the video. Looks pretty dang good. This holster came out sweet. Look at this thing. Leather wrapped Smith & Wesson holster with the level three hood and the little Sentry strap tab. Super cool guys, super happy with it. Derek, thanks for coming to me with this sweet build. I love the inspiration you gave me on this. I hope it serves you well. And guys, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is to go to RiceRespons.com. Check out what I offer. It's mostly holsters. I do some hats. Every once in a while, I do shirts. I even do some funny stuff uh, like this, guys. I mean, every once in a while, you'll see a random little sale on there. Check out the website, RighteousResponse.com. I appreciate you guys and have a good day.